This is the gallbladder, and the gallbladder is often called the cyst, okay? There are some enzymes which control it, like cholecystokinin, cholecystokinin. So attached to the gallbladder is the cystic duct, the cystic duct. This would be the, on this side, which is on this side, this would be the right hepatic, this would be the left hepatic duct. The junction of the two is the common hepatic duct, where the cystic duct joins the common hepatic duct is the common bile duct. Okay? So the gallbladder is supposed to secrete bile in response to a local hormone produced by the small intestine cholecystokinin, which simply causes this to contract. Cholecystokinin is going to be released in response to the presence of fat in the small intestine, because the job of bile is to emulsify fat. Emulsifying is not digesting. Emulsifying is taking a big globule and making smaller globules, just like mastication, just like chewing is. Chewing is taking a bite of food and making it into chunks of food, okay. which means there's more surface area for digestive enzymes to work. Bile does that to fat droplets, takes a big droplet and makes it into smaller droplets so that pancreatic lipase has more surface area to work on. Okay. So that's called emulsification. Emulsification is not digestion. Now, you got a gallstone. Ah, no problem. We'll just take the gallbladder out. Okay, and it's done lap laparoscopically, so recovering time is nil. What's going to happen, though, is you're not going to release bile in response to a fatty meal. So your days of the Big Mac are over. Okay? You will secrete bile constantly into the small intestine, okay? But it's not going to be in a, a concentrated amount in response to fat. It's just going to be there all the time. So you're going to have to be very careful about what you eat thereafter, okay? Now, gallstones, everybody's got them. Everybody's got them because it's easy to do, okay? It's easy to do. A gallstone, this job here of the gallbladder is to concentrate bile. If it concentrates it ever so slightly too much, there's the beginning of a gallstone. And if you eat things that cause more and more precipitation, okay, for instance, one thing that can cause both kidney stones and gallstone is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of spinach. Okay, so if if you're like a fanatic eater, where you're in a habit pattern, I gotta have spinach, 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 okay? You're risking forming stones. The other thing with the kidney, if you drink soda, if you drink soda, okay? If you drink soda, I think that's yours. If you drink soda, you're prone to uh, kidney stones also. So, a fellow that used to be in um, the building where I had my office, he was getting stones all the time. And I saw him walking with a six pack. And I said, give me that. He said, what do you mean? I said, give me that. What do you mean? I said, do you want to not form stones anymore? He said, yeah, they're so painful. Give me that. He said, you're kidding. I drink, you know, a six pack a day. Damn. People are fanatic about what they do. People are fanatic about what they do. So you wouldn't recommend the green guy? We all know somebody that drinks coffee all day long. Coffee's that? They cause the stones too? No, 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 no. Coffee has its own problems. But we all know food fanatics. Are you showing us 
So, why the spinach was Because it's got an oxalate in it. An oxalate. An ox People are uh, phytate or oxalate formers. People are what? People are either phytate or oxalate stone formers. So the chemicals, certain chemicals in certain foods contain phytate, certain foods contain oxalate. Spinach contains oxalate. So you form a calcium oxalate. That's a stone. Oh, and the other one is a phytate? Calcium phytate. Phytate. Oxalate phytate. Okay.